We've got some roster moves to break down on today's show, but really quickly, it is the last day of the month and our last chance to pass the Chiefs report in subscribers. What are we, eight subs behind right now? Come on, let's pump those numbers up. Let's take down the Chiefs within the walls of Chat Sports. Kind of set the tone for a new era between the Chiefs and the Broncos with Sean Payton in town now. So hit that sub button down below. Coming up on today's show, we are going to break down all of the Broncos roster moves as George and Sean Payton have hinted at some players going to short-term IR, freeing up some roster spots, and sure enough, they delivered on their promise. So let's not wait any longer. Let's get into it. Three guys were placed on IR today, which knocks them out for the first four weeks of the season. Quarterback Kwan, Kwan Williams, who suffered an ankle injury early in camp. He got surgery on it last week in North Carolina. He is out for the first four weeks. Uh, safety P.J. Locke, he suffered a leg injury during training camp. And then the UDFA offensive tackle Alex, Pal Alex Palchewski, he suffered a dislocated finger in the final preseason game. I don't know if it requires a month to bounce back or even more than a month for a dislocated finger, but my guess is Denver didn't want to lose him, but they figured we'll kind of just stash you on injured reserve and then hopefully, well, not hopefully, but inevitably when you guys are back from four weeks, there'll probably be some new guys going to IR so we can just swap you guys in and out. Now, there were two notable players who did not land on injured reserve. Wide receiver Jerry Judy and cornerback Riley Moss. Of course, Judy suffered a hamstring strain during the joint practices with the Rams. There was some initial fear that it could be very serious. Ultimately, Denver dodged a bullet, and Jerry Judy, who I don't think is going to be ready to go for the first week of the season, clearly Denver believes that his injury will not have him miss at least four games. So maybe they think it could be one, two, or even three weeks. But ultimately, Denver wants him back as soon as possible. And if he went to short-term IR, he's out for the first four weeks. Meanwhile, the third-round pick out of Iowa, Riley Moss, suffered a sports hernia injury, had to get surgery on that way back in late July, early August, and he did not land on short-term IR, which is very encouraging to see. So hopefully we'll get our first real look at the rookie from Iowa City sooner rather than later. So when those three guys went to IR, that opened up three roster spots, and this is what we talked about on the show. Mike Purcell is back, cornerback Fabian Moreau is back, and offensive lineman Quinn Bailey. So I told you guys when those players would go to IR, Denver would bring back some of the players that they released slash waived, and it was more just an under-the-table agreement of, hey, Mike, we did this last year with you. You know the deal. We're going to release you right now, and once we get a roster spot open tomorrow, two days from now, we will bring you back. So sure enough, these three players are re-signed. So let's kind of run through the updated depth charts now that those players have been, uh, you know, moved around a little bit, starting with the cornerbacks. No Kwan Williams. He's out the first four weeks. I think East St. Bassey, after a really strong performance in the preseason, is going to be your starting slot nickel corner with Pat Sertan and Damari Mathis as your two outside corners. As for the safety room now, P.J. Lott goes over to IR. But you're already very deep at safety, right? Kareem Jackson slash Caden Stearns, they're kind of your co-week one starters. We'll figure out which one Denver ultimately goes with. And then Delaire and Turner Yell on special teams is awesome. And J.L. Skinner, a rookie, is just sort of, uh, you know, getting the swing of things. As for the offensive line, Alex Palchewski goes to IR. So Quinn Bailey comes back to the active 53-man roster and is the ninth guy on this uh, depth chart here, or ninth player in the offensive line room. If something were to happen to Quinn Miners or Ben Powers, I think Bailey would probably be one of the first guys to step up on the interior side. Cam Fleming is your swing tackle. Luke Wattenberg, truth be told, I'm not crazy about him. And if he was not a fifth-round pick last year, he probably wouldn't be on the roster right now. But here he is still. So that is an updated offensive line look. And as for the defensive line, Denver's got a six-man rotation going with Zach Allen, DJ Jones, Jonathan Harris, the UD, uh, UDFA from two years ago, last year, Elijah Garcia, last year's seventh-round pick, Matt Henningsen, and then the veteran Mike Purcell rounded out. Now, the biggest question mark, though, is not one of those rooms we just looked at. It is the wide receiver room, because when Denver placed those three guys on short-term IR, I thought surely a wide receiver is coming now to the active roster, because Denver currently has four wide receivers, and only three are healthy. You cannot play a game with four wide receivers, and you definitely can't play a game with three wide receivers. 
I think what Denver's strategy is, they're going to elevate two to three guys from the practice squad on game day, week one against the Raiders. They probably want to get another 10 days, well, it was 10 days until week one, another week or so of practice in and go, all right, let's have some competition. Let's see who the most deserving, who the best guys are from the practice squad to come up, whether that's Michael Bandy, little Jordan Humphrey, Philip Dorsett, a couple of the notable names on the practice squad as of now. But what's your panic level? over the Broncos wide receiver room. Scale it 1 to 10. Yesterday, our Raiders report host Mitchell Renz was talking a lot of shit about Denver's wide receiver room. Gave it a D letter grade. Scale it 1 to 10, 10 being you are freaking the F out, 1 being you are cool as a cucumber, you have no worries whatsoever. For me, I'm at a 6.3 because the reality is Jerry Judy is going to likely miss the first week of the season and maybe the second and possibly the third week of the season. So if you don't have Jerry Judy for the first week or two of the year, well, this is most likely, I think, your starting wide receivers, the four guys who are going to see the field. If I had to take a swing at it, Cortland Sutton, Brandon Johnson, Philip Dorsett, and then the rookie, Marvin Mims. And outside of Cortland Sutton, there's not a lot of recent experience, right? And even Cortland Sutton is not coming off a phenomenal stretch of his career. It's been tough sledding lately for the former SMU player, Brandon Johnson was a UDFA last year who got an ankle injury in the preseason, came back later in the year, had some nice moments. Philip Dorsett, longtime Colt and Patriot, he was with the Texans last year. The Texans were just hot garbage. They were not even hot garbage. They were cold garbage. But it still goes to show this is a very thin wide receiver room, especially for a quarterback like Russell Wilson, who after last year could probably use some help and some playmakers at the wide receiver spot to get him back into a rhythm. And I'm not quite sure if these guys are going to be able to do that without Jerry Judy. Now, if I had to project what your week one wide receiver room officially looks like, I think it's Cortland Sutton, Marvin Mims, Brandon Johnson, Philip Dorsett, and Lil Jordan Humphrey. I think those are going to be your five active wide receivers on game day. Jerry Judy would be inactive in this case. Maybe Denver brings on a six wide receiver, but they're not going to pass the ball a lot, right? They're not going to trot out a bunch of 11 personnel, one running back, one tight end, three wide receiver looks. No, they are going to get a lot of uh, big packages in place where they want to run the football, which I'm telling you right now, Denver's going to want to run the football. So if they roll out with just a lot of two to maybe even some one wide receiver looks, it's going to be a lot of Cortland Sutton, Marvin Mims, and Brandon Johnson until Jerry Judy can come back. Now, before we even dive into this uh, story a little bit further, our sportsbook partner, BetUS, they've got a great deal for Broncos country. Go to chatsports.com slash bet. Enter promo code Broncos125. When you put all that information in, they give you a 125% deposit bonus. So if you want to put some money down on Denver and Las Vegas for week one, the Broncos are favorite. So make your picks wisely, chatsports.com slash bet. Promo code Broncos125. Now, in case you're wondering, let's say this next week of practice doesn't go very well, meaning Marvin Mims is looking like a rookie who is just that, a rookie, and he might not be a big contributor week one. And Brandon Johnson's working his way back from an ankle in injury himself, and no one on the practice squad is really wowing you. Could Denver maybe dip into the free agency pool going, hey, we gave our guys a whole month of training camp and preseason, no one wowed us. We have some injuries to deal with. Let's not mess around. Let's go get a proven commodity, right? We're not going to ask for Julio Jones or Jarvis Landry to come out here and start 17 weeks. Initially, that's not the plan. But maybe we can get a couple of weeks out of them until we can kind of get through this hump of no Jerry Judy. I wouldn't rule this out as a possibility. I think Denver's plan is this. Bank on Cortland Sutton and Marvin Mims for two weeks, right? They're going to look to Cortland, they're going to look to Marvin, and they're going to say, can you guys get us through this tough two-week stretch until we can get Jerry Judy back? Well, however long it is, right? One week, two weeks, three weeks, hopefully no longer than that. And we just got to figure out a way to just soldier on through. It might not be pretty. We might not have big, splashy plays coming from the wide receivers. We might be focusing on the run a little bit more than planned. But ultimately, we're not going to go out there and try and find a new Jerry Judy for one to two weeks, right? We just got to deal with what we have here and next man up mentality until Judy can come back. Now, before we kind of put a bow on this subject, one quick thing I want to plug. 
Our Raiders report host, Mitchell Renz, who does a great job here at Chat Sports covering the Raiders, he is live right now, as you are watching this most likely, on the Raiders report getting a Raider tattoo. So I'm calling on all of Broncos country to go on over to the Raiders report, click that thumbnail, and start spamming DEN in the chat. Let them know that Petey sent you, and let's get Raiders fans all sorts of, uh, you know, riled up and whatnot, because they've had Denver's number for far too long for how poorly run of a franchise they are. So let's let Raiders, uh, let's let the Raiders uh, nation know that Broncos country sends their regards. Now, before we get on out of here, I've got a hot take because we only have 10 days of these left, nine days after today. It is a very toasty 96 degrees today in the Mile High City. So first take hot take is this might get a lot of blowback. Having Mondays off, which we all have coming up for Labor Day weekend, is better than getting Fridays off. My reasoning is when you get a Friday off, you don't do a lot for the majority of the Friday until everyone else is off on Friday, right? You're still going to go out to the bars afterwards. Maybe you go out a little bit earlier. Maybe you're going to get there at happy hour at 4 or 5 o'clock. Whereas if you're coming off a work day, maybe you're getting there on 6 o'clock-ish. But you're only gaining a couple extra hours. Whereas a Monday off, you're still having a fun Friday with your, with your lads. And then Saturday's off, Sunday's off. And you get all of Monday to avoid the Monday scaries, which now become the Tuesday scary. So for me, give me Mondays off every single day of the week over a Friday. But with Labor Day around the corner, I want to know from everyone watching still at this point in the video, what are your Labor Day plans? Are you traveling somewhere? Are you going to hang out at home? Let me know down in the comment section. I love ending videos with these types of comments and questions because it's a good way for me to get a gauge of who watches all the way into the end of the video so I can recognize the MVPs of the channel. That will do it for us on today's show. We will let you guys go and enjoy the rest of your day. Like the video, subscribe, notifications, yada, yada, yada. You know all that good stuff, and we will see you later.